holding the spare track from the Eastern Railroad. Now, the, I say the Eastern because back in 1843, it was known as the Eastern Railroad, not the Boston and Maine. Mm -hmm. The Boston and Maine uh, uh, bought the Eastern in 1884, so that's when the change of names change of took place. And he built five uh, ice houses uh, near 1A. And uh, the, in 1850, uh, things changed. There was a fellow, Gage, and another one, Hittinger, bought the ice company and built five new ice houses to supplement the old ice houses. Uh, so that's why in the picture you see 10 peaks, mm -hmm. and that's 10 ice houses. Uh, this fellow Landers, I believe, went on to some uh, glory uh, during the Civil War. I think, believe he was a military oh, general. Yes, yes, and, and, uh, and he had he had one of them like ice ship to the troops. To the troops. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they often had their cocktails, but well, maybe the generals <laughs> did. <laughs> when he died uh, early in the war in 1861 or two, I believe, uh, big funeral over in Salem. He's buried over in, in Salem, uh, the old cemetery. I didn't over know there. that. Where, where and, he? Uh, he was yeah. quite a hero, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, they say the date 1873 uh, fire destroyed all gauge ice houses. Now the gauge ice houses were uh, the last ones built, and maybe they didn't burn the first ones, the old ones, and that's why in that uh, fishing picture we see the boat yep. and we see five peaks. Yep. So they were still going, uh, evidently. But at such time, they, the new elevator was built, I think, in uh, 1884, somewhere around there. So, uh, and so that shows that that everything, you know, didn't go at the same time. Yeah. At least that that's the assumption that we have made. Yeah. Uh, in the 30s, uh, Metropolitan Ice Company uh, was the last ice company, uh, and we touched on that going through North Beverly, and that's the one that had the two uh, big ice houses. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, remember and back and looking at some of the photographs, you can see those two big buildings. Uh, they're, they're quite prominent, and, and uh, they will be sh showing up in yeah. some of the other previous photographs. Yeah. The, uh, uh the period then of the ice business really is more than a hundred years of yes. good, solid ice cutting and, uh, as, we, as we say, uh, trading and, and uh, carrying business all over the world. Now, the lake. now um, it also should be noted at the uh, uh, northwest end of the lake, uh, there were, uh, I think, three peaks. Ice, it was known as the Kavanaugh Hill Ice Houses, and they were basically along Cedar Street. Mm -hmm. And you go farther along Cedar Street and the, the, the southwest end of the lake, and uh, not too far, but uh, there were another ice house, which we will see later on when we go down Cedar Street, and they were known as the Smith Julian Ice House. Uh -huh. And today, about all we can see, we can see a few pilings as we go around Pond Hill. We at can, low tide. At low tide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we can see some of the cement foundations over where the Sam Hill Ice Company used to be. Yeah. And I believe up in back of McDonald's where this Metropolitan Ice Company was, there the stone foundations are still in place. Yeah. But that's it. That's, that's it. That's the there last is, that's of what remains of any of those buildings. The, uh, <clears throat> the ones that were probably all... Uh, timber, uh, pretty well burned. Right. The, the reason we can see some of the, the posts uh, along the Gage Ice Company uh, is the fact that they were probably protected to, by the water. To what do we attribute the end of the Ice Age, uh, Harold, uh, the uh, invention of the refrigerator? Would, would you say I that? I would say that. Pretty was, much did it in yeah, the ice business. Yeah, I think that did it. People no longer had to have those uh, ice boxes with right. the dripping pans right. underneath there to have to empty every day and uh, every everybody I, I remember as a child we had an ice box yeah. and, and the ice man would come it was not Beverly Ice and he would come 
uh, through the street, you had a card you could put in your window that said ice, and then he'd come in and ask you uh, what weight piece of ice you wanted, and you gave him an idea, and uh, he'd bring it, he had a rubber uh, uh, top piece, and, and uh, he'd have the tongs, and he'd throw it up on his back, and he'd bring it in, and put it in your ice box, and, and you're all set. <laughs> I'm just old enough to remember when Kelleher was up in uh, Centerville there, used to deliver ice. Mm -hmm. I remember the ice truck coming around first with a white horse and a wagon, and then he had a truck that he delivered in, in the summertime. Was that ever a, a welcome sight to see that ice truck pull up? Because as soon as the fella got off the truck and hoisted his ice up on his back and went to the house, we would jump up there and grab those ice chips. Chips, and, yeah, yeah. And because uh, he knew what was going on, but yeah. we never heard yeah. anything. <laughs> destroyed anything, and no. that was one of our favorite ways of cooling down yeah. on a hot summer's day. Keep you cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I might uh, uh, mention, uh, while I'm in this particular area, that the uh, Namkeg Street Railway, which was the Hus cars, uh, came through Wenham in 1885. Mm -hmm. And the, the changeover, where you saw the road being built, and you got a glimpse of the spirit track to the ice, uh, and they had to build a new roadbed, and this was in 1896. Yeah. So they really, had, in that picture, they really weren't building the track, no. the railroad, they were no. repairing the trolley lines. At right, that point. Yeah. right. Okay. All righty. Now, now, this picture that we're going to show now on the screen, very briefly, will depict where the various ice houses were, Harold. That's the, correct. And okay. in other words, to, to give everybody somewhat of an idea where, where these things were uh, in a bird's eye view looking down on Wenham Lake, uh, this, I think this will clear the air good. on that. Good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Now, we'll get back to our pictures here as we're moving right along. We have a real as it says here on the caption, a real gathering at Wenham Lake in May of 1895, and they were shutting off Longham Water, and the notation says height 30 feet 1 inch. Harold, can you explain that, that, what that was all well, about? Well, they, uh, they had a sounding, and when the height of the lake, at its, uh, it's somewhere in the middle, the, 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 the uh, deepest portion, uh, they were able to measure 30 foot, one inch, mm -hmm. and that told them to shut off Longham, which was uh, evidently feeding Feed. water in uh, to make up for the loss in the summertime. Right, and this would have been that pipe that yeah. we saw a few pictures back yeah. that was coming in from the reservoir. And they, they probably wanted to start out uh, the season, like if, if this being May 1895, they wanted to start out the season uh, with a full lake. Yeah. Wasn't this a celebration, though, of a sort that looks like all the, maybe the dignitaries of the day were out there? And uh, yeah. The, the, maybe there a are, picnic the, lunch there going are, on there? The, we don't know. There are, <laughs> there are definitely dignitaries <laughs> identified in this picture. Yeah. And uh, it tells you one thing. It doesn't take much to make a party. <laughs> yeah, <does it>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next? I have uh, same same uh, picture the same probably. the same day uh, and probably the same gang but a little different view of uh, and this is where uh, uh, the, it's the same shutting off 30 foot one inch and uh, from Longham and it shows you uh, a feeder brook coming into the lake and that's uh, basically where the where the rowboat is yeah. and and I think. Uh, Th this is getting ready for the for the dry summer. Yeah. <laughs> now the flag that we see here, they were really patriotic about this whole affair. Oh they? yeah, I, uh, uh, but it's it's kind of blurry. Would that be to the fact that it was f f uh, kind of waving in the breeze? Yeah, it was uh, waving the in the breeze, and 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 the the shutter speed was probably maybe two seconds. I don't know, one second. I don't know what the sensitivity of the film was at that time, but it surely is nothing like it is today. So as we said earlier in the first program, when you took your picture back in those days, or took a picture, the the objects, be they human or otherwise, would have to be still and stay still for Yeah, a almost take a deep breath and yeah. <laughs> see how long you can hold it. Okay, now, this is a familiar sight to uh, those of us who ride uh, down Main Street every day, the Peters Monument, uh, the rock, famous rock. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned earlier, this was the Wyndham's first minister. 
coming uh, to women with a flock of people in their 1640s, I believe, and establishing, uh, helping to establish uh, the church of, first church of women, as we call it today. Uh, the rock is still about where it sits here, Harold. Is this correct? The, the, the rock is about where it is today, yep. but the, uh, the actual hill, which Peter's Hill and the one you see in the, in the Wenham symbol, uh, was back a ways, yeah. and that's the one that had to be cut down. This, the, the, the uh, inscription uh, was somehow stolen or, or uh, the, the, the bronze The bronze plaque was uh, lifted uh, yeah, well, a while back there, and they had to redo it, but uh, <laughs> between now and then, uh, uh, the earlier ones said, uh, Hugh Peters, uh, with an S on it, and his name was Hugh Peter. Peter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we corrected it on the new. Well, there you go. Yeah. 18, uh, 1908, this picture was dated. Mm -hmm. And down below, uh, well, as we look at it on these sheets here, down below the Peter uh, photo, we have uh, Wenham Lake looking towards the ice houses in 1892. Now, these ice houses were the ones, uh, the first ones on the northern end of the lake at Cedar Street. Okay. This was the Cavanaugh Hill okay. uh, ice houses. We can see a, a little view of the what they had. They had a dam that stretched they, across they the lake. They certainly did. And we'll yeah. see more of that as we get, a, get around the lake right. a bit. And you can see the elevator, too. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. 1897. We're at the foot of Pond Hill looking toward the Gage Ice Company and a boarding house, or the boarding house that kept the fellas uh, overnight. Right. There's, a, there's a, a better view of the boarding house as we go down the street, but uh, one of the interesting things about this view is that it's uh, 1897, and in 1896 they changed over to the electric cars, so we can see these new poles. Uh, that uh -huh. uh, that held the hot wire of the see. of the trolley cars. Yep. Again, uh, the way f pictures uh, date help to date various events. Yes, just, definitely. Just wonderful. Right. And uh, I guess Mr. Kona just turned his camera. He did. The he other just way. turned around and, and, and got a glimpse of uh, the the lake and and uh, bottom of Pond Hill. Uh, you can see some little marker sticks in there, and I think, uh, like you mentioned before, they did a little widening, widening of the road at that time, too. Yeah. I suppose they had to, uh, as, the, as the more people began to use the road as the years went by, they had to do something from the original dirt road that uh, was there when the first people came by. Okay. Now we begin to look beyond the lake, just a wee bit here, Harold, and we have an 1893, November 1893 picture uh, of Main Street as we've just completed our curve around the lake and we're heading due north here. And off to the left, I see the house that is still there today. It was once a bachelor house and now is part of Lakeview Golf Course. Uh, no, now, uh, on the extreme left is the is the boarding house. Okay. Okay. And 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 in the in the middle here is is the house on on Lake Avenue, uh, on the left side of the street. It's a new bachelor house. Okay. Okay. That's where yeah. I believe Fred's father may and Fred himself may have been born there. Yes. His grandfather uh, was the fellow that owned yeah, the house. Yeah, that's across. right. This is Lafayette. Lafayette on, on the right. Yeah. And it, and that house still stands. It is yeah. a part of Mr. Flynn's Lakeview uh, Golf Course. You got today. it. Yeah. yeah. And, and this uh, this is a better shot of the boarding house. Sure is. It basically shows you uh, how how large it is and the the foundation was. Uh, uh, considerably high. Sure is. Yeah. This next picture, uh, our date's a little bit scrubbed here, but I assume it must be 1893 because it looks about the same vintage, and, the, and we see a closer view of the of the uh, boarding house here, Harold. I would say that it has to be pretty much. It's it's uh, uh, the, the trees haven't got their leaves yet. He he probably just went along the street and took a yeah. uh, closer. Now, when we say boarding house, the. the the men who worked during the winter would be, of course, they're working seasonal, so they would need only a month or two at the most right. of lodgings, and this is primarily what this house was for. Yes, and I imagine they served meals and, and, and uh, they allowed them to sleep over uh, because some of these fellows come from out of town. Yeah. 
although there, we do uh, have uh, pictures. I don't have them here, and I don't think we can put them in the program, but see, uh, some of the fellows would ride the train back uh, through Salem at the day's end, you know, mm -hmm. of work mm -hmm. at Wenham Lake, and they'd have to come back the same next day, the same route. They'd have to come back on the train to get to work, but more convenient, I'm sure, to just to stay over. We're looking next at uh, the uh, the spur track, which we saw earlier, digging the, when they were digging the road. Now this was the connector from the uh, Eastern Railroad, B and M Railroad. This would be B and M in 1891. In 1891, and this came right across. Probably, uh, it looks like the fifth, uh, uh, the fifth green or the fifth fairway. At, yeah, you at, can at still see the roadbed, yep. you know, going by yeah. and, and, and heading down. Right now, it looks like a path. You know, yeah, and that's the Lafayette Bachelor House and Barnes in the that's background. That's right, and in in the middle house is uh, T. Wilson Bachelors. Uh, you can see Bachelors uh, pretty much owned this Re area. Regular compound. Yeah, they lived, they lived uh, all yeah. in one, one cluster. Yeah, uh, and that's 1891. Right, and then we have an 1895 picture of the, the boarding house. Fourth again. mentioned boarding house, looking back in the southerly direction. Correct. Okay. All right, Harold. Where do we go next, though? Is this? I, I guess we 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 get a final glimpse of. Uh, I, I I shouldn't say final because we might see another one. But this is the Lafayette Bachelor House and uh, T. Wilson Bachelor House is the. One